All right, man, Jake Browning. No one gave him a chance when he got put in for Joe Burrow. Everyone thought the Bengals season was over, but obviously he's proved everyone wrong. He's playing some really high-level football right now, and I really do think if he can continue to play how he currently is playing, the Bengals have a chance to win some games in the playoffs. So I wanted to jump in to the last game he played against the Vikings, see what he was able to do right in that game. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, man, first play here. All we got, we're going to get Jamar Chase motion across. We're going to get him lined up right here. And then we're going to get him on an out route. And we have T. Higgins coming on a go here. And all we're really trying to hit right here is this out. And if that's not there, we want to come back to a dig on the back side. But for some reason, I don't know if the Vikings were meaning to do this, but this corner right here tries to trap in and jump this out route that Jake Browning wants to throw. And Jake Browning sees that, and he knows there's no one over the top because there's only one safety. So he tries to give T. Higgins a chance, and T. Higgins just can't come down with the catch. You see that right there? You see this guy flat-footing, and he sees this out coming. He's trying to inch towards it. But they're not in cover two, so there's not a safety over the top to protect this go route. So there's no one there. So Jake Browning is already releasing the ball, as you can see, when he sees this guy flat-foot. And, of course, puts it on him. Just got to catch that. Goes right through his hands. Watch it from this angle right here. Quick, decisive. Sees it and lets it rip. See it? Let it rip. Boom. Right in the hands. You got to catch that, bro. T. Higgins ended up making a lot of great plays, as we know. But that's a big one that he's got to come down with. Next play here. And this is really what I've loved from Jake Browning since he's came in. He's just super decisive and gets the ball out really quick. All we got down here, we got a two tight end set. And all we're running is a flat. And then we got a corner on top of it. The read here is just this guy right here. You're putting him in conflict. If he drops back with the corner, you want to take this flat because you don't think Daniel Hunter's going to be able to get out here to that. But if you would drive down on this, you want to throw this corner flat away from this safety for a big chunk. And you're going to see right here what that corner does. It's pretty simple. You have a dig coming backside if, it's, if the whole thing's muddy. But you see that corner backpedaling right there? That's all Jake Browning's looking at right when he sees that corner backpedaling. He's already getting ready to release the ball. He's separated, sees it, puts it on him. Let's get an easy, almost first down right there. Great, great job. Next play here, another great, great throw by Jake Browning. All we got, we got T. Higgins running a post curl. So he's coming up like he's running a post. And then he's curling it right here. Then we have Jamar Chase coming in motion and getting on a wheel route right here. So we just want it to look like post wheel. You're reading this corner. If he squeezes in with a post, you want to throw the wheel. If he drops back with this wheel, you want to try to fit this curl. And if not, you have this right here on the back side as a check down here and here. You can come back to this as your three and your four. Now, the only thing I would critique about this is that the Vikings right here are getting pressure from here and from right here, and you have a hitch right here to replace them. So in reality, what you'd want to do is these two guys are coming You'd want to hit this guy right here to replace him because you're probably not going to have enough time to throw this wheel. Now, that might be the correct thing to do, but Jake Browning, even though he chooses to take the wheel post side, he gets crushed but still gives an absolutely perfect ball for a big chunk. So while you can't just hate the decision, see that pressure there, boom. If he would have just, that all this is pressure is coming here in his face, just throw the ball right here to replace him. It's there. This guy's soft. He's replacing that blitz. That's honestly where you would want the ball to go. But Jake Browning still does a good job of getting the ball out fast and being decisive, like I mentioned. Takes a shot, but still puts the ball right on the money. Next play here. This is something I love from the Bengals. All we got, deep dig by T. Higgins. We got this guy coming out and just running a hitch right here. And then we have this guy attacking the middle of the field with a seam to clear everything out. And then on the back side, you have Jamar Chase on a deep curl route as your last option. So what Jake Browning's looking at here is he's looking high-low between this hitch and this dig. But in this situation, they're in cover two right here. And Harrison Smith is coming back to try to play this Tampa middle of the field. So you're just, you're just getting this right here. Boom. Boom. You have this Tampa player. And then you have flat by these corners. And then you just have hook defenders from these linebackers right here. All these guys are just hook defenders hooking it up right in this area right here, trying to guard stuff like the dig. And curls, like this guy's trying to get underneath this curl route. So what ends up happening here is Harrison Smith drops back in that Tampa 2. Jake Browning looks at the dig right here. He's looking at this dig, which causes him to drive down on it, which leaves this guy wide open. And right when Jake Browning sees Harrison Smith 
drive down this way. He knows there's no one in the middle of the field to take this seam, which leaves it wide open. He puts it out there and just barely, barely overthrows it by like an inch. Now, what I will say here is it looks like Charlie Jones, watch this right here, it looks like he kind of hesitates, and maybe if he never hesitated, he might have been able to make this catch. Watch him kind of slows down and then speeds back up when he realizes he gets the ball. If he runs full speed through that, I think he probably catches it. You can see from this angle just how close it really was. Put it in slow motion. Ah, just right out of his reach. Almost a big play touchdown. Next play here. This is a play that I think a lot of people overlook because it wasn't a huge chunk of yardage, but this is a great, great job by Jake Browning. So the Vikings right here have everyone walked up. You don't know who's coming. You don't know who's not coming. So what he does is he puts this tight end right here to get some extra protection so he can be in the protection scheme and help out a little bit more. And the routes, all you got, you got a stop up here, extended stop, and then you got this extended hitch right here. Jake Browning knows if this guy right here comes and this guy comes, that you have this open gap to throw into because they're blitzing. But even if this guy doesn't come, it's going to be hard for him to be able to get back out of here and get underneath this. So Jake Browning knows where he's going before the ball is snapped. He knows he's going to this tight end on this extended hitch. The only issue with that is that he takes his eyes straight to it. So Ivan Pace is able to drift underneath this pretty easily. But what Jake Browning does that I love here is that not only does he get the ball out fast, he also puts it up and on the outside where Ivan Pace can't reach it. And it allows for it to be a completion and a pretty big play. You can really see where the ball placement is right here from this angle. Watch it. Up and out, up and out. So Ivan Pace runs out of there. He takes his eyes right to the tight end. So Ivan Pace is drifting under it. High and outside. So there's no way he can reach that and break it up or intercept it. And we get a first down because of it. Great, great job. Next play here, we ran this same play earlier. This time, Jake Browning just makes the wrong decision. It's going to happen sometimes, but obviously we didn't want it to happen right here. This is a close game, but things happen, and he did find a way to come back from it, which is all that really matters. So all we got, we got a flat here, and we got a corner here out of this two tight end set, just like we had earlier. And then on the back side, we have Jamar Chase hitching it up here, and we have T. Higgins coming on a dig over the top of it. So what Jake Browning's looking at, high, low here, based off what the corner does, and then he's coming back to his dig as his third option if he doesn't like any of this over here. So what you're going to see happen, it's pretty obvious. The corner, he's drifting back. He gives a little shimmy like he's going to take this, so Jake Browning thinks he's driving on this, I guess. So he tries to fit this, this ball in this window right here, and that corner can just make an easy play on it because he was just playing the middle between them. So when you throw this, you have to make sure, you have to make the corner decide. So Right there, he's deciding on the corner. If you're going to throw something on this side of the field over here, it's got to be this. He can catch this and get upfield for a couple yards. And then it, even if you didn't like it because this guy's playing too much in the middle, you could easily come back here and you have all this grass to throw your dig because this guy is driving down on the hitch, which is exactly what you want from your number three. So overall, Jake Browning, this was just, just not the right decision and it, and it turned into an interception. But on the next drive, he comes back and makes up for it because all we got right here is we're getting a little, we're making it look like we got a screen from Jamar Chase on a flat. These guys are going to come up, act like they're blocking here, act like they're blocking, and they're just going to drift up field. Run goes right here. But this tight end on the outside or receiver, I can't tell what it is, comes out and he does a great job here. He feels there's somebody over the top of him, so he just sits in this grass right here. Jake Browning does a good job of seeing him and just puts it in that honey hole where he can catch it and get a big little chunk right here. So watch it. He's going to pump like he's throwing that screen, which causes this guy to drop down here, and it leaves this gap right here for him to be able to throw into, and he sees it. Good job. Put it on him for a big-time first down. Let's go. Next play here, love this from Jake Browning, just showing him being decisive and knowing what's going on. So all we got, we got a swing here, got a hitch here, we got a hitch here, a little ugly hitch there, and then we got an out here. So if you want this out pre-snap, you can take it. If not, we're working up top to here. So all we got, we're looking at this first hitch to the swing. If this first hitch isn't here and they bump out to it, then you come back to this hitch right here. If this guy bumps over and the corner doesn't drop down the swing, 
or this guy right here doesn't run out to the swing, you can throw the swing. So it's really just swing one, two to the hitch, and then three to this hitch right here. You can see Jake Browning be decisive right here. Watch him. Looking at it. He bumps out with this hitch. Harrison Smith is running with the swing. So he comes back right here to this third hitch that's wide open in a zone. And we're able to get another first down. Watch the eye movement right here. It's just going to be boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, ball. Right on the chest. Easy money. Decisive. Getting the ball out quick. Love it. Next play here, we got a super common concept. I love to see it. You got to be able to throw this with anticipation. You got to have good footwork. You got to be able to trust what you're seeing. And that's exactly what Jake Browning does here. We got a drift post up top by Jamar Chase. And then right underneath it, we have like a little hitch right here. And then he's just going to drift whichever way is away from the linebacker that comes on him, whoever ends up being that flat player. The flat player ends up being this linebacker right in front of him. Here's the flat player. If he drives down on this hitch right here, you're going to have this drift post right here into all this grass. And Jake Browning does a good job getting out on time. You'll see it. Boom. Jake Browning is already releasing the ball right here. Jamar Chase hadn't even turned his head yet. Exactly when you want to throw it, you have all this grass to work with. Jake Browning puts it right on him. Right on the money, right on the face mask for another huge, huge chunk. Next play here, all we got is a little snag concept, which all that is is just Jamar Chase going to be coming up in here and running an inverted hitch. We then have this guy that got motioned across, and he's going to be running a flat. And we have T. Higgins on top of all of it running a corner. Usually how you read this is just one to the flat, two to the hitch, and then three to the corner. But Jake Browning sees one-on-one -on -one T. Higgins on a safety, Huge mismatch. He knows where he's going pre-snap. Sees it. Puts it out there. Puts it on the money. Touchdown Bengals. That's how you come back from an interception. Great, great stuff. Next play here. Got another similar concept to the drift post. All we got, Jamar Chase is going to come under and run that little hitch. Then on top of it, we have a deep dig. And all we're looking for is this flat defender just high-lowing him. Simple. If he comes down on the hitch, we're going to take the dig. If he backs up with the dig, we're going to take the hitch. Super simple. Work this side with your two best receivers on it. You'll see what happens. Flat defender takes the hitch. Boom. Drift post or dig is right there in the window for a big time first down. Next play here. This is beautiful by Jake Browning. All we're going to get, Vikings once again trying to show pressure. They're just disguising it. They're trying to make it look like it's zero man coverage across the board, but it's not. They're going to drop Harrison Smith out of here really quick, get him to the middle of the field, and they're just in cover three. Right there like that. And then you just have hook defenders everywhere else is try just trying to protect the sticks. These guys are going to drop out and be hook defenders as well. So you have four hook defenders. You have uh, three deep three deep people because it's cover three. And if you want to attack cover three, you attack it just like this with a deep dig across the middle. It's third and 21. This is probably the biggest play of the game. And all we're going to get, seam, to clear everything out, we have the first crosser. That's the one. And then we have the second, the second, which is this deep dig at the sticks as the number two. And that's all you're looking at. And then you have this as a check down as a drag right here. On this play, it takes a long time to develop because this dagger at the top of the screen, the dig, is getting all the way to the sticks. Most backup quarterbacks would just throw the check down. But Jake Browning stands in there, is patient, waits on it, releases it with anticipation, puts it on Jamar's face mask, for probably one of the biggest plays in the entire game. Watch the anticipation right here. He's separated right there. He sees that Jamar Chase is running in here. He's already separated right as Jamar Chase is getting out of his break. He trusts it. You can see that. Just beautiful to see, especially from a backup quarterback that nobody gave a chance. Next play here, all we got, similar to what we've been running all day, just from a different formation with different guys. So we got a drift post right into this middle area of the field. And we have this guy coming and just hitching it up right underneath. Once again, you're looking at the flat player high-low. Pretty simple. Whichever one he chooses, you throw the opposite. You'll see it right here. It's pretty easy to see. Boom. No one's falling under that post. This guy's drifting underneath the hitch. Leaves a wide open window right here. For a big play, Jake Browning puts it on him, protects him from a hit. First down. Next play here, getting a similar concept once again. Crosser here, he's running the hitch, dig behind it. You're high-low and right here. In my opinion, it's probably one, and then the, you come to the high-low, 
but it looks like Jake Browning doesn't like this crosser. He, he uh, comes off of it pretty quick and just comes to this high-low because I guess he's really comfortable with throwing it, and he proved that all day long. You're going to see it. Nobody's taking that dig. Boom. He sees it. He's already releasing the ball, but there's a guy right here and on the back side, so you got to put this ball in only one spot. You can only put it in one spot or it's going to get broken, off, broken up or picked off, and he puts it in the only spot it can be placed. Up and out right here where neither one of them can get to it. And once again, on back-to-back -back plays, we get two big-time first downs. Next play here, we're just trying to run like a three-levels concept. So we got uh, T. Higgins on a deep corner to the corner of the end zone. We have this guy coming right in here, and then we have this guy coming on a deep out where you can high-low this corner. And I do think this corner is technically open, but they get pressure comes, they blitz. Jake Browning has to get out of there, and he kind of just throws it up. And gives this guy a chance one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, T. Higgins does his thing. <laughs> Touchdown Bengals. I'm not going to sit up here and praise this. But I will say that it was, a, it was a pretty good throw. No one else could have caught it. You're only giving your guy a chance. And T. Higgins takes advantage of that chance. And scores a big time touchdown to take this game into overtime. And then in overtime, as we know, we get the heroic Jake Browning play. That leads the Bengals to go win this game. All it is, it's a concept that we're running all day. The dig and then the hitch underneath it. But Jake Browning gets pressure right here, so he has to roll out. T. Higgins is obviously clearing everything out here because you're just trying to, you're trying to hit this dig. If not, you're trying to hit this hitch. But because of the pressure, Jake Browning has to get out of there. You're going to see it right here. Send a little bit of pressure or send a stunt. Roll out. Good job on Tyler Boyd to keep running. And Jake Browning puts this ball... And the only place you can put it, right here, to protect him from all three of these guys around it. Puts it right in the middle. Puts it in the bread basket. Tyler Boyd catches it. And then goes and gets some yards after the catch. And we all know that it leads to them winning the game. Watch from this angle right here. Watch the ball placement. Absolutely absurd. I'm going to put it in slow motion. Tyler Boyd, keep running across the field. Jake Browning sees him. Puts it in the bread basket. Nowhere else you can put that ball. And then Tyler Boyd breaks a tackle. And the Bengals get a big time win. And help them almost secure a playoff spot. Well, that's going to wrap it up. I hope you all enjoyed it. Feel free to go down and hit that subscribe button if you did enjoy it. I'd really appreciate it. And until next time, I'll catch all of y'all in the next one.